Bob, as you sing that one, as you said earlier before you began to sing it, each one of the lines, each one of the images could be a song in itself. Yeah, it's a song. You know, you know, I asked you to sing that live rather than the disc. I had this letter from a kid who's about your age, he's about 21, 22. This came about because he was asking, you know, on this program, wondering about what this new generation is really thinking of. We hear so much. And it's, it's an interesting, at the very end he says, you know, America's heard the story of the bright straight A student, the fraternity leading good guy Charlie, the young victim of discrimination, but there's a quiet group that remains, one that has no overwhelming crusade that is outwardly to make, but one that is uneasily discontent. Thoughtfully restless, young people of this sort may eventually be determiners of future directions, but then there's something he said earlier, I can't find the sentence. What's why you think is, outwardly we seem to be cool, outwardly, but there's a rage inside us, you see. Now you were singing that outwardly very easily and casually. That's why I wanted to see you sing it. But oh boy, the fire of the words that you sang. I got a friend who wrote a book called One Hundred Dollar Misunderstanding. Uh -huh. And uh, I don't know if it's around Chicago, but it's about uh, this, this straight-A college kid. You know, fraternity guy, mm -hmm. and uh, a Negro, a fourteen-year-old Negro prostitute, and uh, it's got two dialogues, and uh, in, in the same book, one dialogue in yeah. one chapter, and the other chapter follows with uh, well, this is exactly what he's thinking and what he does. Yeah. You know, in the next chapter uh, is her view of him. Uh -huh. You know, and the whole book goes. Yeah, like I've that. heard of this book. I think it's um, the, uh, this guy Bob Gover wrote it, mm -hmm. and. Uh, that, that would explain a lot too. That's one of the yeah the, the hip more and more hip yeah. things nowadays, I guess. Besides, uh, I mean, I mean, it actually comes out and states something that's actually true. You know, that's everybody thinks about where where I don't know if this fellow that wrote in the letter was thinking about crusades and uh, this guy who wrote it. You can't label him. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. he he's unlabelable. He's uh, <laughs> that's the word. That's where, right. You understand what I mean? I follow you. You know, back in the 30s, in the 1930s, you know, there were young people feeling passionately, you know, under one label or another, do you see? But they they were more or, more or less pigeonholed. But you, what you stand for, it seems, the fellow wrote this letter and the guy wrote that book, they belong to nobody but themselves. Mm -hmm. But we know something is there. You know, outwardly we say, cool, mm -hmm. cool. I suppose you have to be that because the chips on the table are so... Blue. Well, maybe it's just the time. Yeah. Now's the time. Maybe you have to belong to yourself, you know. And I think maybe in 1930, from talking with Woody and uh, Pete and some other people I know there, uh, it seems like everything then was the good and bad and black and white and uh, easy to see. And uh, wherever it, you only had one or two, and you stand on one side, you you know people are either for you, against you, with you, behind you, or whatever you have, you know. Nowadays, it's it just, uh, I don't know how it got that way, but it doesn't seem so simple. There are more than two sides, you know, it's, uh, it's not black and white anymore. Something you said earlier, something, uh, something you wrote, you belong to yourself, that's true. At the same time, you can't help but be connected mm -hmm. with uh, everybody else, which I suppose is why you write these songs. But take this one you sang, this one that I think is a, I think will be a classic, This Hard Rain's Gonna Fall. Even though it may have come out of your feelings about atomic rain, at the same no, time, no, no, it, it wasn't it atomic didn't. rain. No, well, go ahead. Somebody else thought that too. Uh huh. Well, go ahead. Yeah, it's not atomic well, rain. Go ahead. It's just a hard rain. It's hard not atomic rain. rain. No, it's not the fallout rain. No, it isn't that at all. Well, I was somebody else I think said uh -huh. that someplace. So. Well, go ahead. When you say a hard rain, what do you mean?
also happens to be a singer. I figure you all know, so everybody will try to ask questions about what. Well, I'm supposed to be talking to this microphone. Welcome to the first take of the Poets Conference. The press conference. Mr. Dillon is a poet. He will answer questions about everything from atomic science to uh, uh, riddles and rhymes. So people would actually come to the house? Uh -huh. and, and do what? Want to discuss things with me, politics and philosophy and organic farming and things, you know. What did you know about organic farming? Nothing. Not a thing. They started calling you an anarchist. Ooh. The papers, <laughs> that's the word now. Anarchist. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What papers oh, are they? Oh, two or three. Yeah. Just because you don't offer any solution. Kidding. <laughs> of course. through good times and bad times. You know? So I'm not fooled by it. Good times, bad times. Right now, yeah, you're know, making a movie, going, you know, we've been playing some big tours. And, but uh, I've seen the bottom too, you know? So, uh, you know, if you, if you can work, you know, that's the most, that's all you can ask. In this day and age, you know, you can't take that for granted. Just, just, be, just, just to work is, is, is uh, to be able to work is, is what a person should you know, strive after. You know? I think I know what you mean, but a lot of people in England watching our film when they hear that, you know, where we've got a lot of unemployment, they might yeah, think, well, that's, too. They might think, well, that's all very well for Bob Dylan to say that. I mean, he's got a whole lot of money and stuff. I mean, a whole lot of money. You don't mean money, do you? That's what I don't I mean money. I mean, I start out with no money. I'll tell them, I, I, you know, I, I, I don't want to care about money. I had less money than any, anybody I know when I started out. I had no money. I mean, if you're talking about, uh, if you're talking about, you know, um, paper money, uh, and, and, and money in the bank or, or value, wealth, uh, what, what, you know, uh, possessions and all that stuff. I had nothing. Do you agree that uh, you should be the leader of singers with a message? No, I don't know what the way is. Are you going to see the concert tonight? Are you going to hear it? Okay, you hear and see it. And uh, it's going to happen fast, and you're not going to get it all. And you might even hear the wrong words, you know. And then afterwards, see, I, okay, I won't be able to talk to you afterwards. i got nothing to say about these things I write. I mean, I just write them. I'm not going to say anything about them. I don't write them for any reason. There's no great message. I mean, if, if you know, you want to tell other people that, go ahead and tell them. But I'm not going to have to answer to it. I think the availability of guns is a big problem. I don't think it's enough guns. Oh, okay. Who's first? Come on. I'd like to know about the cover of your of your forthcoming your, your uh, uh, album. <laughs> the uh, the one with subterranean music blues in it. I'd like to know about the the meaning of the photograph with you in the wearing triumph t-shirt. Blues in the robot. Well, I'd like to know that that's an equivalent photograph. It means something. It's got a philosophy in it. I'd like, to know, I'd like to know visually what it represents to you because you're a part of that. Um, I haven't really looked at it that much. I don't really I've know. thought about it a great deal. Uh, it was just taken one day when I was sitting on the steps, you know. I, I, don't, uh, I don't really remember any, very too much about it. But well, what about the motorcycle as an image in your in your songwriting? You seem to like that. Oh, we all like motorcycles to some degree. I do. Right. Okay. So do you think anybody that comes to see me is coming for any other reason except entertainment? Really? What's Bob Dylan think of Bob Dylan? Bob Dylan doesn't ever think about Bob Dylan. Do you prefer songs with a subtle or obvious message? With a what? A subtle or obvious message? Uh, I don't really prefer those kind of songs at all. A message, you mean like, what song with a message? Well, like Eve of Destruction and things like that. Do I prefer that to what? I don't know, but your songs are supposed to have a subtle <laughs> message. A subtle message? <laughs> well, they're supposed to. <laughs> 
would you hear that? <laughs> In a movie magazine. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. Well, we don't, we don't discuss those things here. I how do you decide when to, uh, how do you decide when to, to talk to people and when not to? I hope this isn't some horrible practical joke. You think I'm talking now? I don't know. Maybe you're just playing around. <laughs> So I'm surprised you haven't really asked these questions in some other, uh, you know, like a Roger Daltrey's thing, or Peter Townsend, well, of course I would, or Paul been, McCartney. If you know, I'd been commissioned to make a film, would that involve them? I suppose I would be. I would be asking. You would have to, wouldn't you? Oh, yeah. Well, you know, I mean, I'm not going to say anything that you're going to get any revelations about. I mean, it's not going to happen. But, and, 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 well, I, I'm saying I'm not trying to do that. I mean, I hope you're in, you're in nice. Could you grow your beard just a little bit more, like next grow time? It. Yeah, I'll grow it. Yeah, grow it. Grow it. Are you be... done with it now? Yeah. <laughs> Give me a cigarette. Give the anarchist a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is about all I can do. Uh, that's all I've ever done. I don't really remember doing anything else. Why? Why do you sing? Why? Just because I feel like singing. Don't speed on. What do you think of people that analyze your songs? Do they usually end up with the same uh, meaning that you I, wrote? Or... I welcome them. <laughs> with open arms. I want a dog that's going to collect and clean my bath, return my cigarette, and, and give back to my animals and, and give my birds a, a commission. I want, I'm looking for somebody to sell my dog, collect my clip, buy my animal, and straighten out my bird. I look for a place to bathe my bird, buy my dog, collect my clip, sell me cigarettes, and commission my bath. I'm looking for a place that's going to collect my commission, sell my dog, burn my bird, and sell me the cigarette. Get the camera on this, uh, this person here. <laughs> <laughs> what do you bother to write the poetry for if we all get different uh, images? And we don't know what you're talking oh, because about. Because I've anyway. got nothing else to do, man. <laughs> I suppose I want to know where all your songs come from. Well, I can't tell you that because I'm not God, you know? God only knows these things. I want to see this person immediately. Well, whoever's going to shoot me? There's a shotgun right in the house. <laughs> How do you find that out, Albert? Just, just, oh, I just, I just found it in front of the house. Huh? I just found it in front of the house. Phone about office and they say they're going to shoot me. Well, do you do this often? <laughs> well, I don't mind being shot, man, but I don't think, I don't think being told about it. <laughs> oh, man, I can't believe that. Don't worry, Mickey, I'll protect you. I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Don't tell me not to push too hard, man. I'm worried about getting shot. I'm not gonna push too hard. And whether in your and well, the songs are what I do. You see, the, the songs though are, are is what I do. Yeah. Is is write the songs and sing them, uh, and perform them. That, that's what I do. Uh, the performing part of it could end. But like uh, I'm going to be writing these songs and singing them and records for, and I see no end right now. Uh, that, that's what I do. Uh, anything else is interferes with it. I mean, anything else trying to get on top of it, making something out of it, which it isn't, it just brings me down. And and uh, it's not, it's not, it, it's just uh, makes it seem all very cheap. Well, it made me feel like you were almost doing a kind of penance of silence here. No, no. For the first no, I'm not one of those no. kind of people at all. You don't all. need silence. No, no silence. It's always silent where I am. <laughs> you feel like a, an imposter uh, when 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 you're when, when someone thinks you're something and you're and you're not. 
What, what was the image that people had of you and what was the reality? The image of me was certainly not a, a songwriter or a singer. It was more like some kind of a threat to society in some kind of way. What was the toughest part for you personally? It was like being in an Edgar Allan Poe story. And you're just not that person everybody thinks you are, although they call you that all the time. You're the prophet, you're the uh, savior. I never really fought to be a prophet or, 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 or savior. You know how people think you're some, some kind of shaman, don't they? Shaman? Yeah. That's the word. I mean, that has to yeah. be the word. I don't know, man. I mean, I wish you'd tell some people that, you know, that, that write in, people, people write in me. I don't know what people think of me. I see, I, I only know about what, how, you know, record companies say to you. you know? Around that time, he asked me if I wanted to go with him to get a date in Chicago. Did I want to come along? What struck me was that he was at one, or he became identical with his breath. And um, Dylan had become a column of air, so to speak, in, in, at certain moments, where his total physical and mental focus was this uh, single breath coming out of his coming out of his body. He had found a way in public to be almost like a shaman with all of his intelligence and consciousness focused on his breath. Well, I can't tell you that because I'm not God, you know? God only knows those things. <laughs> Some people think you are, don't they? Well, they said that about Eric Clapton too, didn't they? Uh, I just write them. I just write them. I don't know. You know. I just write them because nobody says you can't write them. Well, at least where I come from. Do you think of yourself primarily as a singer or as a poet? Well, I think of myself more as a song and dance man, you know. <laughs> 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 what? Do you think it would bother me one little bit if you disliked me? Uh, no, but there's some people in my life here. No, no, I, you know, I've got my friends. I, I mean, I, you know, I, I'm well situated. Well, what about before you had any friends? Did you, were you worried then? I was always worried. I wasn't worried about it, no. I was lucky, you know. Weren't you? I think I've got well, very few friends now. were you lucky when you didn't have any friends? I can't remember not having any friends. Huh? Really? Now, do you have a lot of friends no, now? No, because, because, um... I reached a stage when I suddenly realized what a friend was, and then I probably had one or two. Before that, I didn't understand what a friend was anyway. You, you talked to your friends? I didn't know who they were then. Well, do you, now, now you're friends. You so talk I talked to your them. friends? Then? Yeah. Mm -hmm. There are one or two people who I believe I can talk to. to. You, you, and that's, that's why you're your friend, they're your friends, because you can talk to them? Um, I think a friend is a friend you, because... Can you communicate with them? Uh, to a certain extent. They yeah. can understand me more than anybody else. Oh, well, yeah, that's why we see we differ. We differ. We come from two different worlds. You come from England, I come from the United States. Yeah, it's true. It's true, but I mean, we're still human beings, so there's some sort of uh, connection between us. No, I'm just a guitar player. That's all. <laughs> Man, you're trying to knock me. <laughs> I believe me. I'm not even trying to do that. I mean, what, I mean, when somebody comes into an interview, you know, what's your attitude? Oh, you just read those interviews that were a couple of the first few days I was here. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah those were, right. You know, you know, you know that, right? You know that that was all lies. L well, I lies don't know. and rubbish. I got, I you know that. The first, the first few lines of Nick Green, much more. Why I came here, I don't know. We regale with all this. Are you going to the concert? Yeah, I'm going to watch. I'm going to watch. I mean, I... This is well, what listen. I, well, this is what I came to see, most okay, of I came to see you, but I thought I'd like to have a with you first. I mean, what is your whole attitude to life? And when you meet somebody, what is your attitude towards them? I don't well, like them. You don't like no. them? No! I mean, if I, I come in here, what's your attitude towards me? No, I have an attitude towards you at all. Why should I have an attitude towards you? I don't even know you. No, but I mean, and it'd be an attitude if you wanted to know me or didn't want to know me. Well, why should I want to know you? I don't know. And that's what I'm asking. Well, I don't know, eh? <laughs> Ask me another question. <laughs> Just give me a reason why I should want to know you. Um, I might be worth knowing. Why? Huh? Why? <laughs> Tell me why. What good is it going to be for me to know you? Tell me. Give me, give me one thing I'm going to gain. Well, you might learn something from my attitude to life. 
Well, what is your attitude to life? Huh? I can't explain that in two minutes. Well, who are you asking me to explain in <laughs> huh? two minutes? That's all you're getting is two minutes. You're asking me to explain something in two minutes, too. But you're the artist. You're supposed to be able to explain it in two minutes. I am? Yeah. Hey, wow. <laughs> Have you found that the texts of the interviews with you, which have been published, are accurate to the actual conversation? No. No, that's, that's another reason for the... I don't really give press interviews or anything, because, you know, I mean, even if you could do something, there are a lot of people here, so they know what's going on, but, like, if you just do it with one guy or a few guys, they just take it all out of context, you know? They just take it, uh, split it up in the middle, or just take what they want to use, and, uh... They, they even, you, they ask you a question and you answer it, and then it comes out in print that they just substitute another question. For it. But when you, you talk about someone like, uh, like in 2010 about Dylan, when you have Bob Dylan, you say he's not authentic at all, he's a plagiarist, his name and voice. Oh, wait, repeat. wait, I didn't say that. I didn't say no. that he's not authentic at all. Th that, that is not a word I use. No, that, see, that was from the L.A. Times. Yes, yeah, so, okay, that's, that's journalistic bullshit. Mr. Dillon, you seem very reluctant to talk about the fact that you're a popular entertainer and you're a most popular entertainer. Well, what do you want me to say? Well, I don't understand why you uh, well, what do you want me to say? To, uh, say uh, who, 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 what do you want me to say about it? Well, you seem uh, almost embarrassed to admit that you're to talk about it. Well, I'm not embarrassed. I mean, you know, uh, what do you want exactly me to say? You want me to jump up and say hallelujah and crash the cameras and do something? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, I'll, I'll go along with you. If I can't go along with you, I'll find somebody to go along with you. Okay. No, but I, I find it. You really have no idea as to why you, or no thoughts on why you're popular. That's the, what interests me. I just have I haven't really struggled for that. I, I don't, uh, it happened, you know? It happened like anything else happens. It's just a happening. You don't figure out happenings. You dig happenings. So I'm not going to talk about it. you feel that? I, I know that, and I accept, you don't see yourself as the voice of that generation. But some of your songs did stop people cold. And they saw them as, as, as anthems. And they saw them as protest songs. It was important in their lives. It sparked a movement. I mean, you may not have seen it that way, but that's the way it was for them. How, how do you reconcile those two things? My stuff were, were, were songs, you know, they, they weren't sermons. If you ex examine the songs, I don't believe you're going to find anything in there that says that I'm a spokesman for anybody or anything. Sentence. He is not so much singing as sermonizing. Colin, his tragedy, perhaps, is that the audience is preoccupied with song. Do you care about what you're saying? How can I answer that if you got the nerve to ask me? I mean, you got a lot of nerve asking me a question like that. Do you ask the Beatles that? Man, I can't make it tonight. I don't know how to cover up for it. It's something I never figured out. I just don't like to do that. I just shouldn't be singing. <laughs> I'm gonna get me a new Bob Dylan next week. Get me a new Bob Dylan and use him. Use him. Here's the new book, don't tell him he lasts. They, they, they must not have heard the songs. It's ironic, you know, that the way that people viewed you was just the polar opposite of the way you viewed yourself. And that's something? You're considered by many people to be symbolic of the protest movement in the country. For the young people. Are you going to participate in the Vietnam Day Committee demonstration in front of the Fairmont Hotel tonight? I'll be busy tonight. <laughs> Thirty some years, whenever I'd go to a march or a sit in or a lie in or a be in or a jail in, people would say, Is Bob coming? I say, He never comes, you moron. You know, when are you going to get it? Never did, probably never will. You know, they were trying to build me up as a topical songwriter. I was not never a topical songwriter to begin with. For whatever reason they were doing it was reasons not really, that didn't really apply to me.